Family Theater presents Barbara Hale, Bill Williams, and Betty Lynn. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents transcribed Safe at Home, starring Barbara Hale and Bill Williams. To introduce the drama, here is your hostess, Betty Lynn. Thank you, Tony Lafano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Safe at Home, starring Barbara Hale and Bill Williams. Every mother of a 10-year-old son develops a special talent a peculiar vocal ability to call back to the fold that busy boy whenever he's needed. About to exhibit her particular style of boy calling is Harriet Bruce, seeking her son Jimmy just prior to supper time. Jimmy! Jimmy! Yes? Time to get ready for supper. Okay. Hi. Where were... What in the world? How do you like it? Well, I... What is it? Or, or who is it? I'm the Archduke Rupert. We were giving a play in the garage. I wrote it. Isn't that your dad's old tux, or what's left of it? Sure. It was in the old clothes box in the garage. We needed costumes, and I didn't think he'd care, Mom. Uh, Jim, your dad'll be home soon. You scoot upstairs and get changed. But how do you like my Archduke's costume? It's uh, very clever and original. Uh, now, you hurry up and get ready for supper. I think I just heard your dad come in the driveway. Can I show it to him? Not now, dear. Uh, some other time. All right. But I bet you he'd like it. Harriet, would you please come out to the garage a moment? Yes, dear. I'll be right there. Oh, dear, the garage. I'll bet Jimmy left it in a mess. <laughs> Look, Harriet, look at this mess. I'm afraid Jimmy forgot to clean it up. He, he and some friends were uh, putting on a, a play. A play? Mm -hmm. Do they have to tear up the whole garage for some stupid play? Oh, Bob, they haven't torn up the garage. They were just using part of it for the stage and the place where you park the car for the audience. It won't take a minute, minute to move these things, and I'll help you. That kid can go off on some of the weirdest tandems. Why isn't he outside playing ball or something? I don't want him to grow up to be a sissy. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Maybe he just wants to create. He's quite a sensitive little boy, you know. Well, I'm a sensitive big boy, and I don't like the way he's going. Well, I didn't know you felt so strongly about it. I'm sorry, but I do. There. Well, maybe I can get the car in the garage. Bob, uh, don't be too hasty about Jimmy. You, you know, you might really hurt him. This is kind of important to him right now. Well, that's just it. It's too important. I think it's gone too far without being checked. There's time for some of this stuff, sure, but, but all the time it's... Certainly you're right, dear, but give him a little time. Try to understand. Okay, sensitive one. I can see where he gets most of this from. From his beautiful and talented mother. But he's a boy, Harriet. He's my boy. Healthy, strong, eager, and active. Or at least he's going to be, right? Yes, Bob, he will be, I'm sure. <laughs> Well, Jim, how about it? Another helping? No, thanks, Dad. Hey, now. You're going to need more child than this to keep going on. Maybe he's saving some room for the dessert. How are things in school, Jimmy? Oh, about the same, I guess. Mm, starting baseball about now, aren't they? Man, I can remember how I used to look forward to spring and baseball. What do they have? Different teams for the different grades? I don't know, Dad. You, you don't know? Mm -mm. I guess some of the boys did have baseball gloves today. May I get you another hot roll, Bob? No, 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 thanks. Look here. L uh, look, Jim, don't you go out on the playground at noon? Don't, don't you play with other guys? No, sir. Then what do you do? There's going to be a school play. So some of us get together at lunchtime and practice. But don't you have time for that during school, Jimmy? Oh, sure. But we'd like to do it. Oh, I see. But uh, what about after school? Do they play ball over at the park? Or... Well, I guess so. 
But you don't. Well, that's when we put on our own plays out in the garage. I know, I know, out in the garage. Harriet, don't you think this has gone a little too far? I want to show you the play I wrote, Dad. Never mind that now. Now, Bob, wait. Ah, uh, Harriet, I'm through waiting. Jimmy, now you listen to me. If you can't get in a few more activities, I don't think you'd better be in that play. In fact, that's a good idea. Tell your teacher you'll be sorry, but you can't be in the play. But, Dad! And I think you better stop using the garage for a theater. Now, get outside and get some exercise. Play ball or play anything. But I have to be in the play. I have the lead. I don't care if you do all the parts. I don't want you to be in it, and that's final. But, Daddy! Now, if you're going to cry, you can leave the table. But, Bob, I won't play ball. I don't want to play ball. Oh, Jimmy, wait. Oh, Bob, now look what's happened. I have been looking at what's happened. And it's time we did something about it. Well, let's not be upset, Bob, you know. Well, here, have some pudding, dear. I think it's quite good, really. Mmm, yes, it is good. You'll like it. No, thanks. I don't want any pudding. I can see you're against me, too. Oh, now, Bob, dear, I'm not really against you. It's well, just... go ahead and eat your pudding. I'm going for a walk. I have things to think about. But, 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 Dad... Well, maybe I'm wrong now and then, but sometimes it certainly would be nice to have you listen to me. Or maybe even agree with me once in a while. Jimmy, are you in there? Yes. May I come in, dear? Your father's gone for a walk. Okay. I brought you some pudding. I'll put it here on your bureau. Thanks. Jimmy, you will have to see that your father only wants what's best for you. It isn't good for anyone to do too much of one thing. But it's what I want to do. You know we all should have enough exercise, especially boys with growing bodies. I'm not sick. <laughs> no, of course you're not. And we don't want you to be. But, Jimmy... Don't you get along with other boys? I mean, out on the ball field or, or on the playground. They're all right. But I've never played ball very much. Would you like to have your dad help you learn how? Yeah, I guess so. Look, I'll talk to him. I'll bet if you promise to spend some time outside playing ball or something like that, he'll say it's okay for you to be in the play. Do you think so? Oh, sure he will. Now, here's what we'll do. Tomorrow is Saturday. Now, in the morning, you can do just what you want. <laughs> So I told him that tomorrow morning he could do just what he wanted And then in the afternoon he'd go over to the park and play ball Oh? And he said he'd try to go out for this team at school Well, that's all I want him to do is try I know, dear He could use a little help, though, you know He really doesn't know much about baseball or sports Well, I, I could give him a few lessons Why don't you, Bob? I know it would help Sure, I should have thought of that a long time ago We'll work together at it. And he can be in the play if he does all these things? Well, yes, I guess so. But, but I bet once he gets started, he'll want to play ball all the time. We'll make a regular guy out of him yet. Why, Mother Bruce, what a surprise. Hello, Harriet. I just made some of my grandson's favorite cookies, so I thought I'd drop them by. Oh, wonderful. Come on in. Oh, I don't mind if I do. Here are the cookies, dear. You know, I don't want to tell on anyone, but your son, Bob, likes these cookies just about as much as your grandson, Jimmy. <laughs> in fact, Jimmy and I have to act quickly if we're going to get any at all. Well, I'm glad to know they're appreciated. Well, how are those two getting along? Well, uh, fine, I guess. You don't sound very sure. It's what I've mentioned to you before. Oh, yes. Jimmy's theatrical endeavors. Yes. We had sort of a crisis the other night. I think, though, I've effected a bit of a compromise. Jimmy's promised to try to work in more athletic activities, and Bob's agreed to let him be in the play if he does so. I hope it works. Oh, I'm sure you'll work out something, Harriet. You're all too nice people to have anything go wrong for very long. We'll see, I guess. Won't you sit down? Oh, thanks, Harriet, but I'm on the way to the market. We'll see you in church tomorrow. Oh, yes, sure. Father has something he wants to show Bob on his car. Maybe you and I can walk home together. Good, I'd love it. No, don't worry, dear. If this doesn't work, I can tell you a few things about that husband of yours that might put some light on this whole thing. I'm sure you can work it out, though. I hope so, Mother Bruce. <laughs> Hi, family. Uh, how's everyone? Hello, dear. Hi, Dad. 
Ah, couldn't you wait lunch for me? I haven't eaten yet, so I'll join you. Jimmy wanted to have his lunch so he could get over to the park. They start playing ball at one. Good. Good for you, Jim. Yes, sir. Uh, Jimmy, I have a little present for you. For me? That's right. Here you are. Gosh, Dad, thanks. Maybe it's that big false beard I wanted. <laughs> That what? Uh, Jim, Jim, Jimmy's been wanting a, an actor's beard he saw at the novelty store, dear. I, I didn't mention it. Uh... <laughs> Believe me, this is no false beard. No, sir. A baseball glove. You bet, son. One of the best. <clears throat> Thanks, Dad. You can take it this afternoon, Jimmy. Yes, son. Oh, well, you better get going. Okay. See you later. He didn't seem very happy about the whole thing. Give him time, dear. All right, I will. Say, after lunch, Harriet, let's walk over to the park and see what's going on. Why, all right, let's. You, you know, just to kind of look around? Yes, Bob, just to kind of look around. Well, here we are, Bob. Well, Jimmy, where's Jimmy? I don't see him out on the playing field. Maybe his team's up to bat. No, no, he's not on the bench. I... Wait. Up there in the bleachers. Isn't that Jim just sitting there? Yes, it is. Well, come on. Let's see what's wrong. Hey, Jimmy, what are you doing here? Hello, Dad. Mom. Hello, Jimmy. Well, how come you're not playing? I guess it's because I don't know how. But you got a new myth. Oh, that doesn't make me a good player. Nobody wants me on their side. Oh, Jimmy, I'm so sorry. Uh, come on, son. We'll just teach you a few things. Now, nah, son, we're over here out of the way. You, you stand over there, Jimmy. Over here? That's it. Now, here. Here comes an easy one. Mm. Oh, I missed it. Well, throw it back. Look at the way he throws, Harriet. It's worse than I thought. You see, you'll just have to teach him. Oh, uh, you're so right. Now, look, Jim. Don't put the palms of your hands together and spread your fingers. Make sort of a cup of your hands. That, that's it, boy. A and let the ball go into the glove hand first and then cover it with the other. Now, here he comes. Good boy, Jimmy. Ah, uh, that's better. Now toss it back. Oh, brother, where did he ever learn to throw? Here it comes again, Jim. A higher one. Careful, Bob. Yeah, he'll get it. Oh, oh Bob, it hit him right in the nose. Oh, that won't hurt well, him. Well, come on. He's hurt, Bob. <laughs> Well, how's the patient? Much better. He did have quite a nosebleed, though. Oh, but that's all part of the game, Harry. But the game's all new to him, dear. Oh, I suppose. But where is he now? He went outside about a half hour ago. Where did he go? I uh, <clears throat> think he went out to the garage. Out in the garage? He was feeling so miserable, Bob. I said he could go out and play if he wanted to. Well, let's just go out and see what kind of a game he's up to. <laughs> Jimmy, are you in here? Yes, sir. Come on over here. I want to talk to you. Your mother said I could come out here. Yes, I know, but, but what about our little... Oh, no. Jimmy, you shouldn't have. Oh, I don't care. This is what I want to do. What are you doing in those funny clothes? Ma, please. Please, my foot. This is just about does it for me. He'd rather walk around like a ham than get out and play ball. So he's your son. You can figure out what to do with him. Wait, Bob, you don't understand. <laughs> I always enjoy these walks home from church with you, Mother Bruce. Gives me a chance to talk and kind of relax. From what you've been telling me, you haven't had much relaxation at all lately. No, I'm afraid not. It's been miserable. Absolutely miserable. Oh, it is hard when those you love are unhappy. It's not that both of them haven't tried. It just won't work, I guess. Harriet, did you know that Bob used to write quite a bit? Write? Yes, Plays, poetry, and prose. A little of everything. No. Yeah, he was pretty good, too, really. He never tried to do anything with them, but he seemed to enjoy it. Then he... He tried to forget it. Bury it. Seems he succeeded. But well, why would he try to bury it? Well, oddly enough, it was his father who seemed to make him ashamed of it. Well, I... Oh, maybe not as violently as Bob is trying to do right now, but he was an influence anyway. But why, Mother Bruce? Well, that's why... That's what I've always wondered. I... 
I finally decided it was because of the business. Bob's father felt desperate that his son must take over the business. Well, he did, and now since Bob has taken over, Dad has been able to retire. Yet all this from both sides is still in, Bob. Yes. I can remember the scrapbooks Bob had. He kept all his work in them. He was very proud of them, at least to himself and occasionally to me. So that's what those are. He still has them? Yes, they're in a trunk. I don't think he's looked at them for years. Perhaps he should. Oh, well, I don't... Yes, Mother Bruce? Perhaps he should. Jimmy? In here, Mom. What are you doing, dear? Just thinking, Mom. Just thinking. Must be very serious thoughts. Sort of. Jimmy, I know you're a little confused, but I think I can help. You know, I read something last night I want you to think about, dear. It was all about some famous men, famous for several things. Why, one was a fine writer who used to be a great fisherman. And then there was a boxing champion who could dance, dance with the best of them. There was an all-American football player with a magnificent voice. And there was a heavyweight champion who knew all about Shakespeare. Ball players who were lawyers and doctors as well. And Jimmy, many actors are wonderful swordsmen, riders, and athletes. They have to be to all, do all different kinds of parts. You think about these men, will you, dear? Yes, Mom. I will. Good boy. I think you'll see what I mean. Harriet, honey. Where are you? Up here, Bob, in the attic. Where? Here, in the attic. Oh, what's going on up here? I've been looking all over the... the... What do you got there? Oh, I was just looking at some old things in these trunks. Uh, Some of your things here. Yeah, I see. Oh, Bob, these poems are beautiful. (laughs) I was rather young then. Well, I thought I was the artistic side of the family. Oh, they aren't much, just Mm -hmm. some things I felt I had to say, if only to myself. I guess we all have things inside us that have to come out, one way or another. Oh, I guess so, but... Hey, let me see those, huh? Mm Mm-hmm, certainly. Uh, I uh, think I'll go down and start dinner. All right, honey, I'll be right down real soon. Yes, dear. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Mother Bruce, have you seen Jimmy or Bob? Why, no, dear, not since this morning at church. Well, they were both here after church, and now they've both disappeared. That's strange. I left Jimmy in his room, and now he's gone, and I left Bob in the attic, and now he's gone. In the attic? Yes, uh, he was looking at some of his old things in a trunk. Oh. Well, don't worry, dear. I'm sure they're both all right. I'll call you if they show up here. All right, Mother Bruce, and thank you. I'll call again if I can't find them. Bye. Oh, you'll find them, I know. Goodbye, dear. Jimmy? Bob? Yes, dear. Yeah, I'm back. Where on earth have you been? Everybody's disappeared around here. Well, I've been thinking upstairs, and and, and then I went for a walk. A walk? Yes, Harriet. I was wrong. I see that now. Oh, but not that wrong, dear. Uh, But mostly. I I think I can help Jimmy now. I'm sure you can. What's in the box? A little gift for Jimmy. It's... Well, it's that set of whiskers he wanted. Bob. Oh, Bob, he'll love it. Oh, I I just remembered. I don't know where Jimmy is. He's been gone for a couple of hours even before you left. Is he out in the garage? No, I've looked everywhere. Even phoned your folks. Well, we'd better get busy and find him. I hope he hasn't gotten any crazy ideas about running away. Oh, Bob, you don't think he'd do that. Well, maybe that's Jimmy now. Hey, where is everybody? In here, Jim. When do we eat? Boy, I'm starved. Jimmy, Jimmy, what's happened to you? Hmm? What do you mean? Your clothes, boy. They're kind of messed up. And, and look at your face. Your face is all scratched and dirty. Oh, honey, what happened? Did you fall or something, Jimmy? No, I just slid home. I stretched a three-bagger into a homer. Stretched a three-bag... Oh, Jimmy, you've been playing ball. Sure, Dad. And the new meat is great. I went over to the park and told those guys that the only way I could get good enough to play with them was to start playing. And you did? Sure. I just pretended I was an actor playing a part. Like Burt Lancaster played Jim Thorpe. Or Gary Cooper played Lou Gehrig. That's it, Dad. 
That's all there was to it. Except I sort of forgot about playing a part because I got too interested in the game, especially when I slid in safe at home. Oh, Jimmy, that's wonderful. Jim, I got this for you. With your face in that condition, I think you'll need it to cover it up. Oh, gee whiz, the uh, beard. Thank you. You know, and I can show you a few tricks, too, Jimmy. I was uh, in a few shows at college, and I was pretty good at makeup. Oh, gee, that's swell, Dad. Oh, no. What's the matter, dear? Are you all right, Mom? Yes, I guess so, but I don't know if I'll be able to survive. Two hams in the family. <laughs> <laughs> Again. You know, at a little informal gathering the other night, the topic turned to prayer, and a friend of mine was asked, what's the world's best prayer? I thought he would say the Lord's Prayer, or the Ave Maria, or something like that. Instead, I confess I was shocked when he quietly announced the alphabet. I thought he must be teasing. But the alphabet isn't a prayer, I protested. Being of a deep spiritual turn, he proceeded to prove the opposite. The alphabet, he began, is one of the few tools that man has that's almost infinite in scope. It's an immense treasury. It contains all the thoughts that the wise men of the past have ever shaped and expressed, and all the beautiful thoughts that those yet unborn are going to express. Since God is wisdom uncreated, man needs something as vast as the alphabet to praise him. In its tongueless combinations, the alphabet contains the sigh of the wind, the dance of the rain, the sweetness of growing things, the rush of the river, the unrest of the sea. All of these things, expressed or yet to be expressed, are communication with God according to the laws in which he made them. I began to see what my friend meant. I was almost breathless with the beauty of it, and the others were hanging on his words, but he didn't stop there. Since everything, he added, comes from God, we need something of almost infinite content to give him back some of his fullness and perfection. That's what prayer is, giving him back some of his fullness and perfection. The treasures of the alphabet are as yet unexplored. In fact, they are almost inexhaustible, just like the treasures of music. That's why I insist that the alphabet is the world's best prayer and the world's prayer book. For in its limitless combinations, it becomes the cry of finite man to an infinite God, language. Beautiful, this thought, isn't it? Family prayer is beautiful, too. For the family that prays together, stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Safe at Home, starring Barbara Hale and Bill Williams. Betty Lynn was your hostess. Others in our cast were Irene Tedrow and David Duvall. The script was written by Roderick Peterson, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us again next week when Family Theater will present Round Trip starring Anne Blythe and Jack Bailey. Join us, won't you? This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.